So when I was a student in high school, I was very into science and I was very into the humanities as well. Uh, I loved reading Stephen Hawking. I loved reading books by uh, Albert Einstein. I loved Emily Dickinson. I loved Allegor Allan Poe. However, from the teachers and my peers, there was this feeling of pressure that I needed to choose one or the other. Uh, for example, I went to a poetry club and one day the English teacher who ran the club confronted me uh, for wearing a Einstein shirt. And he said, oh, Einstein, you know, he's responsible for the bomb. And later on, when I got to college, uh, the computer science uh, students, my peers, would make fun of me for being into poetry. They'd say, oh, poetry, that's really useful. So it's common for people who feel anxious about technical subjects to say, oh, I'm bad at math. Um, or people who are into the sciences to say, I don't want to consider the ethical implications, the societal implications of what of the technologies I'm working with. And it's a concern that the subject of computer science may suffer from this, because computer science is a subject that especially needs to be informed by the humanities, by people considering the societal implications of our technology. Also, by interweaving the humanities with computer science, we can make the subject far more accessible and let students know that they are welcome into the subject, that you don't have to have that you don't have to get deeply technical in order to appreciate the issues that computer science grapples with. So I want to talk about some ways we can bring literature into the computer science classroom. Um, I think reading, deep, sustained reading, is a very important exercise. It's the same, it, I believe it exercises the same skill used in programming, which is a deep, sustained focus. And this, so it's a great exercise. Uh, first, we'd like to start with history. Here we have a, a, mind, a recent book is A Mind at Play, which is about Claude Shannon who connected Boolean logic, realized that Boolean logic could be used uh, could be expressed through electronics, and he wrote a paper on that. And he, what's a lot of fun about this book is, uh, its book is all about how much this man loved to play. He made flame-throwing robots. He made a, ro a robot mouse that could navigate a maze. He was all about playing and less about making money and being serious and more about having fun and enjoying life. And so it's a great book on, uh, a great book on a great role model in a way. Uh, there's uh, James Gleick's uh, Information, A Theory of Flood. This is a fantastic history of the history of information, starting with the use of drums by Africans, by African tribes, to communicate in analog while, uh, while we were, while the Western world was still using Morse code, which is a kind of binary. While we were communicating a ABCs, African tribes were communicating entire paragraphs with their drums and language. And this book goes through, it touches on Claude Shannon, it goes into the modern world with Wikipedia and modern websites and the issues we're dealing with. Uh, there's Turing Cathedral by George Dyson, which I have not read, but has been highly recommended to me. This is currently on my to-read list. There is also The Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage, which I have mentioned before in a previous video. This is a wonderful alternate history of uh, Lovelace and Babbage, what if the difference engine had worked. And this is a lot of fun, and it touches on a lot of computer science concepts, and it's got a lot of wonderful footnotes talking about the history and of this, of this time of steam. I do want to take a moment to mention my own book, where I have a chapter talking about the history of computer science and the many uh, diverse individuals who were involved in what we take for granted as the modern computer, how beginning with the, uh, the user interface, how we have all these icons, and these icons have abstracted away the, incre the 100 years of complexity from, from uh, uh, high-level code with uh, object-oriented programming uh, to Fortran to assembly code, which gets less and less legible down to machine code with ones and zeros all the way down to integrated circuits and, log and uh, logic gates and we talk about going from computers of this size all the way back to the to Ada Lovelace back to the a loom and and weaving and how today we are weaving ideas just like Ada Lovelace had said teaching computer science is about teaching social issues 
uh, this book, Programmed Inequality, How Britain Discarded Women Technologists and Lost Its Edge in Computing. You know, it's an amazing thing when you read the history of computer science, you see all of these women so prominent in the early history. In fact, the term computer comes from computers, which was the, the probably, I guess, the first job position that was made automated out of existence through the invention of computers. Which, was a, which were women, armies of women who com performed computations all day long. And this is the story of how Britain kicked all the women out of, out of their computer science, uh, computer science innovation and destroyed themselves. They went from being the world leader in computer science to being uh, a footnote in the, in, in the history of computer science. There are the many works of Lawrence Lessig. These are Creative Commons books. I believe he's released them all in Creative Commons format. Um, he has written many books about the ownership of ideas in the modern world and how uh, a great example he gives is how you can't filming while walking through New York. There are many things you can't include in your film because so many, so much of our culture has been copyrighted. And uh, one of my favorite things about his books is in one of his books he says, my my goal in this book is not to tell you what your opinion should be, but only to have an opinion. And I love that. Um, his books are fantastic, very accessible, and he, as I said, he practices what he preaches by making his, by releasing his many books in Creative Commons format. It's not just, it's not just books, but also movies. Uh, Coded Bias, um, Coded Bias is a fantastic documentary on how algorithms are uh, being designed by, often by white men do not, uh, are not trained to properly account for women and minorities. It also talks, it makes you think about all the algorithms that rule our lives. This is a fantastic documentary. It is currently, you can currently request to do screenings with it. Uh, I look forward to this, to this documentary being made more available in the future. There is, I also found online a, um, a syllabus for Halt and Catch Fire. I just saw the first episode of this today. Um, it's not, this is a syllabus. It's also a, uh, great for a, a, book group if you're going to if you want to have like a, a watching group and discuss the uh discuss the episodes they've got different page she's got the the author has got different pages for different episodes the 15 episode series this is a series about uh it people um working in the 1980s and 1990s so there's a lot of interesting history um it's based on a lot of interesting history you also get introduced to a lot of in the in just the first episode one of the characters reverse engineers a ibm bios uh chip and it's presented in a very realistic fashion um again adult content warning computer science is philosophy uh this is a fun book um I, it's hard to say how much of it is nonsense and how much of it is is genuine i do find a lot of it thought-provoking um the dao of programming it's a collection of cones um where instead of talking about the dao they're talking about programming and uh you can find this online for free you don't have to buy the book i bought the book just because i could there is uh, the Zen and Art of Systems Analysis, a uh, similar thing. Um, we're talking about processes in a, in a kind of philosophical Zen kind of way. There is Kevin Kelly's Out of Control, um, uh, The New Biology of Machines, Social Systems, and the Economic World. Uh, fantastic book. I love Kelly has this um, one thing Kelly is really good at is talking about how our technology co-evolves with us, how our technology gives us what we, we get what we want out of our technology and in return our technology gets to continue to exist and improve. Um, it's a common mistake. I think a lot of people tend to think, oh, my, my, uh, there are people who feel like their iPhone loves them and your iPhone doesn't love you. Your iPhone is an inanimate object that is giving you exactly what you want so that you will feel that you love that so you, that you will feel loved and it, and taken care of and that way it will continue to exist and propagate and more iPhones will be made. Computer science is about predicting the future. Uh, this is Future Shock by Alvin Toffler, a you can get a copy of this for dirt, dirt cheap. It was written in the 1970s. Um, in a way, it's, it is, has been overcome by events, but what's really interesting is how much, uh, when you read this, how much uh, he got right, how 
he believed that information would become more specialized, jobs would become more specialized. We would start to break down instead of having these big monolithic, this big monolithic culture, we're going to break down into many, many subcultures and we're going to get overwhelmed with the number of choices we're going to have. And it's a good book to read. It's fun to read to see what he gets right and what he doesn't get right. And there's a lot he doesn't get right as well. There's, uh, I found this book, um, got this book uh, at a uh, yard sale or book book grab, uh, Learning for Tomorrow, The Role of the Future in Education. Uh, it's a collection of stories about the future of education. Um, there's, there's articles in here like science fiction edu as an educational tool. Look at that, in the typical 1984 world, look at that, perfect luck draw there, which brings me to the next book, 1984. Uh, a lot of people wonder if this book has, this book has been kind of overcome by events because 1984 didn't happen, but the point of the, of the book being titled 1984 is that no one knows what year it is. 1984, it's an interesting idea, when we, when, interesting concept um, of this authoritarian state where everyone has these devices in their in their homes constantly monitoring everything they do and say and in the book you have this authoritarian state and here in real life um, we were able our corporations were able to get us to just put these in and actually pay them to put these devices into our into our into our living rooms computer science is about rebellion I uh, love the show, Mr. Robot. Again, adult content warning, very adult content warning. However, this is, uh, if you want to show clips from this show, the, the, the portrayal of hacking in this show is so realistic. There are so many times I've been watch, I've watched this show and the character will say, oh, I've got to do something. I've got to hack this cell phone tower. And you're like, oh, come on. He's going to hack a cell phone tower. And then they show his screen and they show he's running a script, sending out emails to all the administrators who might be involved with the cell phone tower, fishing for one of them to send him the password to hack the cell phone tower. Uh, again, the portrayals of hacking in this show is fantastic it's about it's a show about re a rebellion and about it's the uh, it's the it's about a, a world where we go from our world into the cyberpunk world i found this book ones and zeros at a used book sale by sadie plant uh, it is a delightful kind of um almost street there's like stream of consciousness it's like a collection of notes it's highly technological it's very feminist it breaks out of the mold. That's what I like about it. It's, it makes me think of like E.E. E. Cummings and maybe in that kind of non, very non-traditional, very uh, breaking out of the format to, to create a, a really nice literary work. In the same kind of rebellious counterculture kind of vein as Sadie Plant and Mr. Robot, we have Ted Nelson's Computer Lib, Dream Machines. You can and must understand computers now. Again, yet another another text that is very nonconformist. It's very rebellious. Half of it is printed the other side. Um, it's filled with technological technological jargon, but also mixed with with insightful commentary. This is a, this is a great book. Finally, computer science is beautiful. Uh, we've, I mean, fractals. This book is highly, this is a book I picked up at a book sale. It is highly technical. Um, <clears throat> it's got programs to create fractals. And this, you know, this is a little bit more heavy than I wanted to get into. So let's take a look at Stephen Wolfram's A New Kind of Science, which is, I like, to, I like this book as kind of a, it's a kind of a coffee table, a very accessible, kind of book about fractals and about emergent uh, using algorithms to create emergent patterns here we've got uh, yeah digital different algorithms um, the one word of warning you do have to get past Wolfram's uh, epic ego um, he takes credit for a lot of things that uh, he did not invent things that had come before him but which he kind of takes credit for in a way but this is uh, Wolfram's A New Kind of Science. I think you can probably pick a copy of this up. It's a huge book, but you can pick a copy of it up pretty cheaply. Uh, UI and UX design is a very important aspect of computer science. You know, how we interface with our computers, how we understand the, 
the information we're giving. The, the computer speaks in zeros and ones and, and really uh, speaks in electric currents when we get down to the very bottom of it. But the works of Edward Tuft are really amazing. He takes, he's really wonderful at talking about how to communicate visually the different ways to communicate information. I don't have his book. He's got a book uh, called Beautiful, Beautiful Information, Beautiful in, uh, Science. I've been picking these books up. At, whenever I see one of his books at a used books at a used stale, I always grab it. Um, I've got three so far. These are just absolutely wonderful. Talking about maps, statistics, how to visualize data. This is a great piece. He uh, he takes a takes a hospital. Uh, hospital uh, receipt, a bill, hospital bill, and, can, and, and has someone explain to you in this dense information that's so cold what is the human being uh, is going through based on what the receipt has in it. It's really, actually I would say this is my favorite of his books, the Envisioning Information. And saving the best for last is the New Media Reader, which is a collection of articles, about uh, the history of artists and innovators taking technology, cutting edge technology, and using it in new and thought provoking ways. Here we have an art display where gerbils are matching wits with a computer built environment. Here's a robot changing the environment. An art exhibit talking that just deals with privacy issues with television sets and speakers monitoring his phone calls for people who attend art patrons to listen in on. It includes an article, it includes Vannevar Bush's As We May Think, where he talks about the Memex, a device for storing and retrieving information uh, in a mechanical fashion using microfiche uh, long before we had the internet. It includes uh, selections from the, I believe it's Ulipo, which is uh, using algorithms, early attempt in the, I believe in the 1960s probably, uh, to generate algorithms, uh, algorithms that would generate poetry. And kind of des describe it as knitting, knitting potential literature, not literature, but potential literature. It mentions computer lib dream machines. This is the book where I learned about that. So this book is a fantastic jumping point uh, for for learning about uh, different ways uh, in different ways computer science expresses itself in the humanities and in art. There's a chapter on responsive environments, such as a maze that responds to the user walking through it. Seymour, Seymour Papert's uh, Mindstorms, where children write programs that draw art through instructions. It touches on feminism with a cyborg manifesto, science, technology, and socialist feminism in the late 20th century. Got the new manifesto, GNU, new is not Unix. So this book is a fantastic launching point for discovering artistic and innovative works that are very thought-provoking. So these were books from my personal collection, books that I've read, books that I'm intending to read, that I, I think touch on the fact that computer science is not just about technology, it's about philosophy, it's about futurism, it's about uh, it's intertwined with social issues. It's it's rebellious, and, and most of all, I think it, I think it's also very beautiful. So these are ways we can talk about computer science and literature, uh, and intertwine those two subjects in our curriculum to give students a more richer a richer experience and make our technolo technical people more literary and our literary people more technical so that we can all be more well-rounded.